wife and I hope. And so, before I <laughs> um, get off here, I'd like to acknowledge Ronnie Sharpton, have him come up and speak. opportunity uh, to speak uh, in front of such a great crowd uh, that's here for, uh, of course, something near and dear to my heart. Um, and uh, hopefully one thing you, you gather from the speaking is how grateful I am. Um, like Court said, my, my name is Ronnie Sharp, and, and you know I've had a chance to meet uh, some of you, uh, hopefully at some point all of you. But if we haven't had a chance to speak, uh, I would like to kind of introduce myself. Um, you know, I am, I am many things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm a Christ follower. Um, I'm a husband. I'm a son. Uh, I'm a diehard Arizona Wildcat fan. Uh, I'm a church league softball player, uh, which if you could notice my, that wasn't swag. When I was coming up to the stage, I busted my foot, and uh, uh, I haven't been able to walk right since last weekend. Uh, I'm a community servant. Uh, I love serving the community in any way I can. I'm a father. And I'm a uh, Calvin Klein underwear model. In, in my dreams. Uh, and, and probably of those of my wife. Uh, but, but seriously, in, in addition to all of these things, I'm a CF patient. Uh, so, you know, why was I asked to be here tonight? Uh, to be honest, I, I'm not sure. I'm quite frankly a terrible fundraiser. Um, I love my life. I, I absolutely love my life. I am incredibly blessed. Uh, and I can't stand in front of a crowd anywhere and say any different. Because in my heart of hearts, I feel incredibly humbled to be able to walk in these shoes that I was given. And a lot of times they don't ask guys like me to speak. Um, and so I was, I was a little taken back and, and uh, at first I wasn't so sure uh, that I could do this. Uh, I didn't think it was the right fit for me. Um, so why did I decide to come up here? Honestly, it's because my wife made me. Um, I, I know that, that our husband's in this room, uh, currently nodding in agreement. Um, I would suggest, sir, keeping your nodding to a minimum. Um, you're welcome. But, you know, I, I, I often do things because my wife insists. But in this instance, um, I'm not up here because she told me to do it, but I'm up here because after I said that, you know, I, I just didn't think this was a great fit, she reminded me how perfect of a fit this actually was uh, and how blessed I am and that I'm alive now because of the people who sat in the chairs before you. And so I really do feel like I'm, I'm standing where I need to be. Um, and, and I really hope you can, can get that. This, this, a lot of times at these events, it's these far off people that we never meet, we never touch, we never see. Uh, but you know, this is this is real, real life, um, and, and it's affected me, uh, you know, so much, obviously. But like I said, and I'm going to say it all throughout this speech, I have a wonderful life, no complaints. God has blessed me with a gorgeous wife, a spunky daughter, um, a plethora of wonderful friends and family. Um, and to say that I'm abundantly, abundantly blessed 
would, would be a, a, an understatement. But when I was born, and I know parents in this room, uh, court can relate. When I was born, I was told, or to be more accurate, my mom was told that I wouldn't have all of these things that I value most in my life today. I was never expected to be here. Um, I was told flat out I wouldn't be here. My mom was told I wouldn't be here. She was told this by doctors. She was told this by support groups. She was told this by television. She was told this by Google. Wait, no. No, they didn't have Google. Um, <laughs> she was told this by books at the library. Remember those? Okay. Year after year, milestone after milestone, I've been told not to count on making it to the next. I lived to see my first day of school, but my mom was told not to count on me going to high school, and certainly not college. When I made it to high school, I was told not to count on joining the workforce. I was told not to plan on living long enough to get married, and as an 18-year-old boy, She's not supposed to start already. Uh, <clears throat> as an 18 year old boy, I was told that I would not have children of my own. But milestone after milestone, I began looking forward to the next one. I began, began thriving in between my last turtle and the latest expiration date placed on my life. I thrived and currently thrive because of people like you. Generous men and women who have given a little of what they have so that I, like many dear friends, may have more. It is because of people in your seats two and three decades ago that I got new medications. With, you know, if, if, if I didn't have those, again, this isn't, a, this isn't a drama, but if I didn't have those medications, I would be dead. I, I would not be here. And I wouldn't have those medicines if it weren't for events like this, if it weren't for fundraisers. And so I, I owe my life to people like you. I, I owe my family to people like you. People who have sat in these seats have funded clinical trials that are currently transforming the lives of my friends and some people that are, are very, very, very close to me. But even with all that, and, and with all the great things on the horizon, and, and all the great strides we have made, I, I, I'd be remiss not to tell you what the daily life of somebody with CF is like. My life is still with pills. No big deal. We can all swallow a pill. It's still with medications, treatments. Now think of this. I spend three to four hours every day on a vest, or doing a breathing treatment in order to stay at my healthiest. Three or four hours every single day. No weekends off. Put yourself there. Yeah, I love my life. Love it. But that sucks. I mean, it, it, it takes time away from my family. It takes time away from things I'd much rather be doing. I exercise at least an hour a day to improve my lung health and overall, the overall well-being. You know, I'm no math major, but we're, we're talking, it's, it's a part of full-time job to look this good. <laughs> but, but even with all of the work I put in, the, the daily grind, the, the, the grind that, that for me, I've accepted it's not gonna change. And that's okay. I'm gonna do three to four hours of treats, treatments every day for the rest of my life. I'm good with it. But even with that, I spend time in the hospital every year. I go to the hospital on average one to three times a year for two to three weeks at a time. I've been averaging about 45 days a year in the hospital for the past three years. And so when you add up all these hours, you know, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that I, I do sit back sometimes and wonder what, what great things I could be doing if I had those hours back. Uh, 
what I could pour into my family if I had those hours back. And, and please hear me when I say it's not all about me. Um, I, I'm up here for the next generation. I'm up here for the younger kids. I've had my time, um, but I speak for them. And, and you have a chance to change that next generation. And, and just like people before you have allowed me to make it past those milestones, you have another opportunity now, uh, one that is greater than those that, that have sat in the chairs before you. You have an opportunity not only to extend my life and the life of my friends living with this disease, but you, you do have an opportunity to transform our lives, not just lengthen our lives. That's, that's good. Believe me, I'm grateful. You've lengthened my life. Quite honestly, now I want a better life. I want a better life for my friends. I think at some point soon, we're, we're going to be at a point where, where we keep on having these events and, and we're going to have less treatments, maybe no treatments. Uh, maybe we'll cut back or eliminate hospital stays. Maybe at some point, with your donations, with your time, with your support, uh, there will be a day where I don't feel the daily lung pain and exhaustion that I fight every single day. I really do believe we're on the cusp of changing this disease forever. Taking it from a death sentence that my mom was given, an absolute no doubt about it, your son's going to die. So maybe just a slight hurdle. Wouldn't that be great? Just a little blip on the map. <laughs> so at this time, um, I'd like to uh, bring my wife, Mandy, and my daughter, McKenna, up on stage with me. Um, and, and also the janitorial staff can bring a bucket and a mop up here, because this is where I turn into a sobbing, sobbing <laughs> nutcase. I've actually never spoken with my daughter in the room. I've spoken with my wife in the room once. Why is she sleeping? That's, that helps, but I know she's there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> I'll, I'll be honest with you. Before. Before I met my wife, and before my daughter was born, uh, <clears throat> I didn't care about future milestones. I didn't care about all the stuff I was told that I was going to miss out on. I was happy, like I said, I've always loved my life. I was happy to live the life I was living, uh, in large part. Uh, due to that ravishingly beautiful woman at my table that I call mom. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but honestly, I didn't care. Uh, I was more than happy to be called home whenever Jesus wanted me there. However, now, each potential milestone is huge. Each and every tomorrow, next week, next year, next decade, is incredibly, incredibly important to me. Now, making it to meet each milestone is not only my hope, but it's the hope of my wife and the hope of my daughter, even though she doesn't know it. <laughs> and it is with your help and your donations that I feel confident that I will walk my daughter to the school bus on the first day of kindergarten. It is with your donation today that will allow me to one day I'll one day see my daughter walk across the stage with a cap and gown.
and, and truly it, it will be because of you and people all of this nation and fundraisers like these that will allow me to one day see her dress in her most important cap. that she will have to wear. Because I guarantee you, I will hold her hand as she walks down the aisle. And these milestones that I have lived to see in the past pale in comparison to the milestones that I hope to see in the future. But again, please, please hear me. This isn't about me. It is about the next generation. It's about those parents who tomorrow will be told your son or your daughter has cystic fibrosis. And it's about the hope that we can give them. And of course, for me, it is about them. That's what I devote my life's work to, that next generation. And your donation today could prevent my girls from sitting in a waiting room while I undergo a double lung transplant. Your generosity today can prevent Mandy from having to sit down and have a conversation with McKenna that her daddy went to be with Jesus. And your support can spare Mandy from being a young widow. On our wedding day, as part of my vows, I promised Mandy that she would never be alone. And I can promise her, and I can promise each person in this room that I will continue to work my butt off every day to make sure that happens. And I just stand here before you asking for a little bit of help. I promise you, individually, each one of you, I'll do my part. I'll do my part every day for me, I'll do my part every day for them, and I'll do my part every day for the community. I won't stop. Just help me. And the impact of your donation may feel insignificant tonight. You may add an extra zero to your check and still only receive a rose in return. But the impact of your donation should not and will not just be confined to this room. The impact will be felt, felt around the world by me, my dear friends, who all have similar stories across the globe as we get to hit new milestones each and every year. Lastly, I just want to thank you so much for your love, your support, your generosity. And finally, I'd just like to say, bear down. <laughs>